Welcome to the Automation World Get Your Questions Answered podcast, where we connect with industry experts to get the answers you need about industrial automation technologies. And you can find even more answers by subscribing to Automation World at subscribeaw.com. That's subscribeaw.com. Now, I'm David Greenfield, Director of Content for Automation World, and the question we'll be answering in this episode is, how to choose robot grippers? Now, joining me to answer this question is Michael Gelker with Festo, a supplier of industrial automation technologies ranging from electric, pneumatic, and servo pneumatic actuators and robot grippers to servo motors and drives, sensors, and controllers. So thanks for joining me today, Michael. Yeah, thanks for having me, David. So before we get into the specifics about, you know, different gripper types, you know, let's first talk about how to approach robot gripper selection based on the application. So can you explain how engineers or operators, you know, should first look at what the gripper will be used for to help narrow down their gripper options? Yeah. So, you know, gripping always begins with the workpiece. So what do you need to pick up? You know, so what's the size, the mass, and material? And then there's different design constraints as well. So, you know, what kind of max speed and acceleration is it going to be exposed to? Uh, the cycle rate, how many cycles per minute? Uh, the precision that's needed. You know, what about drop protection if you lose power? Things like that. Uh, then there's also environmental factors. Uh, so what's the temperature that it's going to operate in? Will it be exposed to contamination, you know, dirt, dust, oil, or moisture? Uh, will it be exposed to cleaning processes or chemicals? Uh, does the application require anti-static materials like handling electronics, things like this? And then there's other factors to consider as well. Uh, cost, of course. You know, what's the upfront cost, the operating and maintenance cost, as well as energy consumption? You know, so all of these factors will lead you to the best type of gripper for the application, whether it's a mechanical gripper, vacuum, magnetic, or soft and adaptive type of gripper. Then you can get into the specifics to select a particular uh, gripper product or solution to meet your needs there. So oftentimes the gripper manufacturer will offer software sizing tools to help you select the best gripper based on the application parameters. And, you know, before we get into the the gripper types, you know, let's look at just the robot types. And, and by that, I mean, you know, industrial robots or collaborative robots. Does the type of robot technology you use, you know, have an impact on what your gripper options are? Or is it more about the ease of gripper integration onto the robot based on technology partnerships between the gripper and robot suppliers? Yeah, you know, with collaborative robots, uh, you know, since these are often used in close collaboration with people, safety is a major consideration. This means that the gripper or the end effector, you know, doesn't have any sharp edges or pinch points. And then uh, the other safety aspect is the potential loss of power, you know, shouldn't result in a dangerous failure where the object is dropped unexpectedly. In addition to the safety aspect, uh, collaborative robots, uh, they're often used by companies and people without extensive robot or automation experience, so the grippers must be simple to integrate and commission. As you mentioned, some robot manufacturers have partnership programs with end-of-arm tooling manufacturers, providing direct mechanical interface of the gripper to the robot, as well as a software plugin, which enables simple plug-and-work commissioning. With industrial robots, they have similar ISO standard mechanical interfaces as cobots, so the integration is similar, but without the software plugin. So that needs to be developed by the integrator. Another factor is that industrial robots can typically move much faster than cobots, so the speeds and accelerations need to be considered when selecting and sizing the gripper. So with those questions addressed, you know, let's now, you know, get into the different gripper types and the kinds of applications they're best suited for. You know, and let's start with the pneumatic and electric mechanical grippers, which tend to be the kind of grippers that, you know, most readily come to mind when you think of a robot gripper. So how do these types of grippers work and what kinds of applications are they typically best suited for? As far as how they work, uh, mechanical grippers, they convert a linear or a ro rotary motion to the gripper jaws via some type of mechanical linkage or maybe a wedge cam mechanism or a rack and pinion. 
And the driving force can be pneumatic with a piston, or it can be electric via a motor and a gear. Um, with the pneumatic grippers, uh, they're actually the most common. They make up around 85% of the market. They tend to be more lightweight and cost effective than their electric counterparts. They also feature higher grip forces, can handle faster cycle rates, and are more suitable for the harsh environments. Uh, electric grippers, on the other hand, they can offer greater precision as well as motion control capabilities such as speed, force, and position control. They do tend to be a little bit heavier due to the presence of a motor and other internal components, which also increases their upfront cost. So grip force to weight ratio is best with pneumatic grippers, and limiting the weight of the end of arm tooling is always a big priority as this impacts the size of the robot and other components as well as the max potential speeds and acceleration. You know, lighter is always better. Uh, you know, whether it's electric or pneumatic, mechanical grippers typically utilize lightweight gripper fingers made of aluminum or maybe a 3D printed polymer. Uh, the fingers are often designed according to the shape of the object to be handled. So mechanical grippers are typically best suited for applications where the same or a similar object is being handled. Uh, mechanical grippers generally offer higher precision compared to other gripping methods like vacuum and magnetic. So it sounds like, uh, Michael, you know, the as you were describing those, the difference between uh, electric and pneumatic type grippers, that a lot of the, char the performance characteristics are much like the difference between any type of electric or pneumatic actuator, whether it's a gripper or not. Is, is that accurate assumption or is there a difference when it comes to grippers? Yeah, no, you're right on there. Yeah, the, the difference is very similar. Uh, you know, pneumatics provides high uh, power density, so high force in a small package. Uh, the electric gives you more flexibility uh, to control things, controlling force and speed and, and things like this. Okay, thanks for explaining that. So, you know, now let's look at the, the vacuum grippers, you know, which I've typically seen being used to gently pick up, you know, softer objects. How do these grippers work and when should they be considered the gripper of choice for an application? You know, vacuum grippers use suction cups or pads uh, with vacuum generators or pumps. Uh, the vacuum pressure is generated with positive pressure that runs through a Venturi nozzle. Uh, or it can be generated with an electric pump. Uh, vacuum grippers may be as simple as a single suction cup, uh, multiple suction cups, or a large modular matrix of cups. Uh, the vacuum pads are typically larger and rectangular in shape for applications like palletizing, where you're handling one or more boxes. When it comes to the suction cups, uh, you know it's important to consider the nature of your workpiece as well as the environment when you select the material. Uh, Buna rubber suction cups, for example, they're ideal for oily or a plain type of workpiece where silicone is suitable for food as well as hot or cold objects. And there's, of course, an assortment of uh, other materials available for different circumstances. Uh, the cup shape is also an important factor, especially when it comes to gripping objects that are maybe flat versus round or you know, slim versus large. Uh, something that's very sturdy versus a delicate object. So that could also impact the, the cup selection. The vacuum grippers are inexpensive, uh, compact and flexible. So they're ideal for limited workspaces and they can handle a variety of objects at high speeds. Uh, at the same time, however, vacuum grippers can run up your maintenance and operating costs. You know, the suction cups are susceptible to quick wear and they need to be replaced. While the generators, they can consume high rates of compressed air, and they can also clog up if there's uh, dust or other contaminants in the air. So the vacuum grippers, they're really well suited for basic handling applications. However, uh, if the like high precision is required, then you may be looking at a mechanical gripper. Much like you know, vacuum grippers are used to pick softer, you know, more easily damaged objects soft adaptive grippers seem to offer a blend of mechanical gripper technology with the ability to gently handle items like a vacuum gripper does. You know, what can you tell us about these soft adaptive grippers and for what types of handling applications are they best suited? Yeah, so soft and adaptive grippers, it's a really hot topic nowadays. Uh, you know, there's a really great deal of innovation in this area right now. 
there's a lot of demand to automate handling and picking applications, especially with labor shortages and increasing costs there. Uh, you know, the food and e-commerce segments are, are really driving a lot of that demand right now. Uh, soft grippers, like you mentioned, uh, it's really a type of mechanical gripper, but they have soft, flexible, uh, typically polymer fingers, so they can handle delicate objects without damaging them. Uh, you know, they're very common in food applications. Uh, it might be picking strawberries or mushrooms or packing apples, uh, things like this. Uh, where adaptive grippers, they have the ability to handle a variety of different products. Uh, so this is really ideal for e-commerce. Uh, you might be, uh, you know, there could be various different products that have to be picked and placed into a box. And so the adaptive is, is kind of like a universal gripper. It can pick up all different types of products. So the soft and adaptive grippers, they can handle work pieces of various shapes, sizes, and orientations. So it enables automation in areas where it previously didn't exist. Um, you know, because they don't have any hard surfaces or sharp edges, uh, they're really well suited for handling food, uh, glass, and other delicate objects uh, without causing any kind of damage or marking the surface. Uh, compared to mechanical variants, however, the soft grippers are less precise and typically operate at a little bit slower speed. So finally, let's look at magnetic grippers. You know, this is a type of gripper I haven't seen as often as the other types uh, we've been discussing here today. You know, how do these magnetic grippers work and, you know, what are they typically used for? So magnetic grippers, they're used for handling or holding uh, ferrous metal objects, so such as steel or uh, cast or wrought iron. Uh, some common items include sheet metal uh, and large or odd-shaped metal parts. You know, one of the advantages of using magnets is one-sided gripping or clamping compared to mechanical grippers or clamps where you need to be in contact with two or more sides of the object. Uh, regarding how they work, there's two primary designs. Uh, there's a permanent magnet design that contains a magnet that's uh, always on, and the magnet and the gripper is simply moved away from the object using a pneumatic or an electric actuator. So it's essentially removing the magnetic field just by moving it. Uh, these are simple and inexpensive, uh, but the magnet's never off, just away from the part. So they can you know, collect metallic dust or chips, and that can cause early failure or maybe scratch the parts as well. Uh, there's a, the other popular design is from MagSwitch, and it uses two round magnet pucks. Uh, just envision like hockey puck shape. Uh, it functions by aligning or misaligning the north and south poles of the two magnets. Uh, so when you, when you align the north and south poles, then it's magnetized, so it's on. And when you uh, misalign them, then the residual magnetism is, is gone, so there's no magnet there. Uh, typically, a pneumatic swivel drive is used to rotate one of the magnets. And uh, this design is really is nice because it provides a true on-off capability, so you don't have that contamination concern. And it also offers higher forces since you have the two magnets there. And I would imagine, too, with magnetic grippers that it's, uh, it's, they're energized when they're actually picking up objects and then de-energized to release them. Is that the way they work, to pick an object, hold it, and then release it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, so the, the difference is with the permanent magnet, the magnet's always on. And uh, the, the magnet gripper is simply moving the magnet farther away from the object uh, to, quote, turn it off, but it's actually always on. Uh, whereas with the mag switch, uh, you are rotating one of the magnets, and that's uh, basically turning the magnetism on or off. So you do have a true off that way. Um, and the nice thing with the mag switch is, uh, you know, it's pneumatically controlled, so it's not consuming energy uh, while it's either energized or de-energized. So you can turn the magnet on, and then it's on forever, and you don't have to have compressed air or anything to it. So you have that security that if you lose power, you know, the magnet's still energized uh, with that design. So, Michael, one last question. You know, early in our discussion, you know, we talked about supplier relationships between gripper suppliers and robot suppliers, you know, since they often tend to be separate companies. 
So should end users look for universal type grippers that can be used with most robot types, or does it make sense to focus on gripper technologies from companies that have technology partnerships with the robot suppliers? Yeah, so just to clarify, uh, you know, the term robot supplier is typically referring to uh, articulating robots, uh, you know, with rotary joints or axes, you know, the most common type being a six axis robot from suppliers like Fanuc, KUKA, Yaskawa, ABB, UR, and others. Uh, you know, other types of robots are also commonly used with grippers, such as Cartesian robots. These have linear axes like X, Y, and Z, and the gripper attaches to one of these axes, most commonly the vertical Z axis. <clears throat> uh, with, the, with the Cartesian robots, the gripper integration is unique to each component and gripper combination, and using the linear axis and the gripper from the same manufacturer can simplify the integration as standard adapter plates might be offered. Uh, but getting back to the articulating robots, uh, these typically use an ISO international mounting interface for the end of arm tooling like grippers. Uh, you know, so mechanically, the interface is essentially a universal mount for robots from different manufacturers. Uh, the benefit of the technology partnership programs with the robot suppliers is that a software plugin is included, which makes the software integration and commissioning simple. So for the simplest integration, it's definitely best to select grippers uh, or the end of arm tooling from these technology partners. Uh, even if an off the shelf solution won't meet your application needs, those technology partners would be best suited to like modify a design or develop a unique solution since they already have the software plugin expertise to support you. Uh, these technology partnership programs, they've been very successful in my view. I expect to see these adopted by more, if not all the manufacturers, as well as more end of arm tooling suppliers to join the programs and expand their offerings. Well, thanks for uh, clarifying that, Michael. And thanks for too for bringing up uh, mention of uh, Cartesian robots. You know, so much, you know, focus in the robotics industry is on the articulated robots, Delta robots, Scara robots that sometimes it's almost uh, easy to overlook the Cartesian robots, which are really, you know, workhorses in the robotics side of industry. They're used for so many different you know, assembly applications and others uh, in a variety of industries. So, yeah, it's a good point with that. So, you know, thank you again for joining me, for, you know, for the podcast, Michael. And thanks, of course, to all of our listeners. You know, and please keep watching this space for more installments of Automation World Get Your Questions Answered. And remember that you can find us online at automationworld.com and subscribe to our print magazine at subscribeaw.com to stay on top of the latest industrial automation technology insights, trends, and news. Thank you.